Hey guys, Ace Susie here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on about three special effects that I've been using. The three effects I'm going to be covering today are as follows. A basic atomic ray effect, or just basic beam effects in general, eye glow, and pixel motion blur. Now for this video, I'm going to be using After Effects CC. That is the only version of After Effects that has pixel motion blur included in it. So if you don't have CC, then you're not going to be able to do that effect. But you should be able to do the other ones. First thing you're going to want to do is open up After Effects. I already have my clip set up in the whatever part this is. The thing that holds my clips. Sorry. Um, you're going to want to open up a new composition. Or, uh, never mind. Just drag in your footage. Doesn't really matter what order. If you can make a composition if you want. Uh, there's going to be a lot of us in this video. Go to composition settings and just give a rough estimate of how long you think the video is going to be. I'm just going to put in 15 seconds. It's probably not going to be that long, but if it is, whatever. Now you can drag in more clips. Now, um, first things first, I'm going to be covering beam effects. So let me just drag in my first clip. Or I'll make it all pretty and set up the video. Never mind. You just saw like 10 minutes of editing and like, I'm going to try and make it like 10 seconds, probably a little longer, but whatever. You get the point. Um, first, I'm going to go into a beam, and that's going to come from Reagan. You know, I forgot to make this fit in the comp. So... If you want to do that, you go to transform and fit to comp, and whatever piece of footage or whatever picture is too big will automatically fit into the comp. It's a really cool feature. But we're going to move right here. And I'm just going to pre comp it. You just go down, or you right click on your footage, and you hit pre compose. Make sure you move all attributes and check this box. Never mind that. And hit OK. Now you can just dub double click in this and you can just edit your footage and it looks nice. So, right here is where I want the beam to come out. So, I'm going to make a new layer. <laughs> Forgot I was doing it for a second. You don't need to name it, but you can. Shut up, Facebook. I'm gonna call it Beam. Now, I'm gonna drag this all the way there, so it starts right there, obviously. And I'm gonna right click in the box here, and generate Beam. As you can see, it's not really anything here. So what you wanna do is go to Length and uh, make it 100. Now go to start, and just drag it wherever you need it to be. 
go to thickness and make it however thick you want it to be. I think 100 is too thick. Try 75 or 50. Alright. 50 is good. But you want the ending point to be a little bit thicker. Just uh, because it looks better. You color it. I'm just gonna. That looks good. Now go to these little stopwatch looking things and click it like that. You go a frame ahead, bring it like that. Another frame shit. <laughs> uh, another frame, bring it further. Another frame, bring it all the way up. And, um, you have a basic beam right there, but that doesn't look good, it's not really animated, so... What I'm gonna do is go into Noise, and the amount of noise, put it at 100%, not 10. And now you can see it looks like it's moving. But it looks off, so you go into generate light burst. And you drag this center to about where it starts. And now it looks animated, like a Millennium Meme almost from Godzilla. It looks pretty cool, and that's a basic beam. If you want to go one step further, I can drag this over five seconds. Or not five seconds, five frames. Go on to the original clip. And you can do this with uh, light rays, but I'm going to use optical flares from Video Copilot just because. Why not? Just because I can, obviously. Go down and go over original. Drag where you want it to be. Color the tint however you want it. And um, go to brightness or scale. I set a keyframe. I set it to zero. Then, right about there, you're gonna want it to be like that almost. So it look, there's not really a. I don't know. I think it just looks better. I can't really explain it that well. So it looks like that. Add some animation into it, so go to rotation offset. And for the rest of it, go to all the way to the end. And it doesn't really matter, just make it go up. And now you can see it goes. It, it's animated. And it looks pretty good, so there you have it. That's a basic beam effect. Now. I'm going to do another beam effect, but this time it's going to be for Thunder Durimba, and it's going to be a lightning effect, or you can use it for gravity beams, or corona beams, or whatever you want to use it for. So, go onto the clip, pre-compose it, make sure these are all, this is all uh, set, double click it, and now you're gonna want to, that's not the clip. <laughs> I pre-composed the wrong clip, because I'm stupid. Pre-compose the right clip, make sure all that stuff's checked off, double click it. And now, basically you go into layer, and uh, don't go into layer, no, don't go into solid, go into adjustment layer. Right click, okay, no. Not what I wanted to do. Although you can, I guess, why not? I'll do that after. Go into Obsolete and Lightning. You can go into... Uh, you can use Advanced Lightning, but I think this one's easier to work with. It's a little more basic. So basically just drop this wherever you want it. I'm gonna move it over here. Both of these points. 
and you just move them wherever you want them, really. Move ahead some frames, and you just move them wherever. I really don't know how else to word it. It's really pretty simple. And unlike most effects, this animates on its own, so you don't really have to keep moving keyframes around. One thing you want to do, though, is increase the width to however you see fit. I think it looks good at around 90, so I'm going to put it at, or 100, doesn't really matter. And that's basically lightning effects. It looks pretty basic, so I'm just going to add in a... It needs to be two. Next, I'm going to be doing eye glow, which isn't that really, it's not hard to do. It's just tedious. You take two pictures, one like this, and then you take a light and you shine out the figure, and then you take another picture, and then you would key out the eyes, like this. Or maybe a little more accurate. You get the basic idea. You would do that to all the eyes or all the places you want to glow. Damn it, phone. <laughs> I'm popular whenever I want to make a video. Um, and then you. Well, what I did, what I like doing is, I'll make that the only visible layer, and then I'll go to composition, and then save as, and then go to file, and you render that out as a file. You don't have to do what I did and uh, take two pictures, you can take one, but I just like to go the little extra step and take two, then I can just make these eyes glow. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, never mind, I'm stupid, I forgot to bring in the other file. So yeah, I'm gonna show you what not to do, then I'm gonna show you what to do. I totally planned this, by the way. You go to Generate, and then you go to Light Rays. See, if you bring it in, then only this area gets lit up. But if you get rid of that again, okay. They still look disgusting. Whatever. This is just a quick video, it's not too in-depth, but you get you should get the basic idea. Fit the comp. Cut the file down. And you add the glow effect. Depending on how many eyes or things you want to uh, make glow, you're gonna wanna bring in as many effects as you need. Go to intensity, go to the beginning, keyframe it, a few seconds, or a few frames later you bring it up. So if I were like bright you want it to be, duplicate the effect with control D, do that, I'll do that twice, and I'll bring the center where I need it to be. how you get the effect. Pretty easy to do. Let me just feather that. I can't feather that. I'll add a blur so it doesn't ew, so it doesn't look awful. That looks better. So that's two effects down and one to go. The last one is the easiest by far. Alright, let's go to right about here. As you can see, that looks okay, I guess. But you can make it look better. So, right click or go up to effects, go down to time and pixel motion blur, and you're pretty much done. You just want to let it render. 
adds a little more realism to motion shots. You can see it, uh, motion blurring, whatever. Now, one last thing. If you're doing a shot like, where is it? A panning shot. Panning shots do not need motion blur because they'll look really weird. But uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped some people out who want to do effects. Asusa signing off.